hey, Ross World, my money makes money. Which income class are you? Now, quite frankly, I don't freaking care which income class I am. Long as I got some cash in the bank, I can take care of my bills and my family, invest my money, save some money, diversify my money, and take some trips and be well off for the future, that's me. <laughs> anyway, so the median household income in the U.S. is $59,039, okay? What that means is, that's the median. That means that half of Americans fall above that amount and fall below. Now, I got some notes, excuse me while I look down, because you know you have the upper class, okay? Um, and a lot of people think that the upper class is kind of like the one percenters. They're in a whole category by themselves, okay? Now, the upper class guys, they make around $389,000 a year, okay? And according, this is all according to different statistics that I, I actually looked up. This is based upon the Economic Policy Institute, the one about the upper class. Now, you also have the upper middle class, okay? They bring in around $200,000 a year. Now, I'm not going to get into all the percentages. I'm just giving you the meat and potatoes of it all. Now you move right into the, the middle middle class and then the lower middle class. And this is a wide range, okay? You have 35,000 to 100,000. That's families or a single person that brings in, okay? That brings in that amount of money every year. And then this is, you know, mostly built upon families. And I got this information from the Urban Institute. They define Middle class is adults with size adjusted household incomes of between 30,000 and 100,000 for families of three. Okay, so what does this all mean to you? And once again, the poverty line, okay, this is the poverty line. They said the current official poverty threshold is an income of 24,257 per year for a family of four and 18,000. 871 for a family of three, okay? That is really no money. 24,000 a year, what, 24,500, 24,200? That's really no money, okay? And that is the poverty line, okay? So we're talking about poor, 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 poor people when it comes to the poverty line. What does this mean to you? In essence, it really shouldn't mean that much. It, it's a good information as far as where do you fall, but it can kind of help you to understand that the economy that half of Americans fall above 59,000 and the other half fall below. Now, depending on the areas that you live, that is the real class. So if you live in New York, okay, and for you New Yorkers out there, you know what I'm talking about. If you live in Manhattan, there's no way you can survive off of $24,000 if you're not homeless. But if you take that $24,000 and you move to Mississippi, you move to Alabama, which are what they call poor states, you may survive off of that. But there are certain areas where you just can't survive off that amount of money. You go to San Diego, there's no way you're getting a place in San Diego unless you're living with 10 people. San Diego is very expensive to live. Uh, Washington State is very expensive to live. D.C. is very expensive to live. So when you're talking about what class you live in, what class you are in, what income class, that dictates where you live. That dictates where you shop. Because if you make Below 59000 you say, well, I live here. i like, well, how much you make? You're like, I make 40000 That helps me to understand why you live there. Now, if you say, I made 100000 and you live there, I'm like, you're saving a lot of money, aren't you? You know, that tells me that you have a plan. Because when people do better, they live better. I know when I didn't have better, I didn't live better. When I did better, I moved out. I'm like, I don't want to worry about People breaking in my car, people breaking in my house, me getting robbed on the street, even in my own neighborhood because people are doing badly. And of course, I blame them because they have a choice, but I understand there's some outside factors that I'm not going to get into that conversation. We're talking about money here. That if you live in those neighborhoods and you make that great money, you must have some master plan. But most people, when they do better, they live better. So 
This is only important to gauge yourself to understand how the economy is because some people are like, well, why can't I afford that and I get paid this? That's because, let's say, for instance, that condo, that house is $2,000. $2,000 a month and you only make $2,500 or you only make $3,000. You can't afford it because those underwriters or those rent people or those people who are trying to sell you the house, they understand that you have other bills, gas, insurance, light, water. So understanding your income plans is imperative to understand where you stand at. It understands why you're not granted the same loan, the same amount, the same amenities, the same neighborhoods and areas that someone who makes more money than you, okay? Because I'm going to tell you now, now, long time ago, it didn't matter how much money you made. If you was a person of color, they just wasn't going to let you in. But nowadays, it's about that money. Now, maybe in some neighborhoods, I don't know, but I know if I take my money to a substantial neighborhood, they don't care what else. They're going to sell our house. I'm going to rent that. Now, as far as I know, okay, that's just my experience. Maybe you had some different ones. But for the most part, the income class thing is only a good gauge to see where you fall at in America. And it also helps you to understand why you are and where you are compared to other people who don't make the same or who are in the same class. Now, granted, people who make twenty-four dollars to $30,000, they may live in a particular neighborhood and may be all black. It may be all Hispanic. It may be all white. We cling to what we know. We cling to what we look like. So that's the reason why you have uh, racial disparities in certain neighborhoods, okay? But we're talking about money, and we're talking about a little race in there, but don't get, don't get hooked on the race thing. But I'm just trying to help you to understand why you have white trailer parks, you have the expanded neighborhood, who, you know, you see everybody outside here, the buying neighborhoods. You see everybody outside the ghettos, the slums, the trailer parks, whatever. This is why. Because if those people didn't, if those people made over $100,000, a few things would change. And, they, and this is for all races. Better education. You probably have a degree or a trade. And the second most important thing, your ass won't be living there. This is Ross where, where don't get hung up in the race thing. Get hung up in the economics and the understanding of your income class. I'm out.